So I replaced it with an emergency off your floor. The next nurse to report for duty will be me assigned to you. That's right. This is certainly a new experience around this hospital. I don't think it had to be you to draw a faint just as the doctor's ready to operate. Well, at least you had sense enough to fall on the floor instead of on the patient. I don't suppose Dr. Russell will ever forgive me. It's customary to let the patient do the thinking, ain't it? Lucky Mabel was there to help me. Why didn't you tell me you didn't feel well when you reported for duty? I could have replaced you then and avoided all this excitement. I was all right then. It was after I received Tommy's letter. What about Tommy's letter? You two lovebirds haven't started to quarrel by mail, I hope. That's a new one. Tommy can't come home next week. Why, just because of a silly little quarrel? Say, after all the planning and work I put in, you two will get married next week, even if you don't speak to each other on your honeymoon. We haven't quarreled, Linda. Tommy's in trouble. He says it's about some bonds being stolen. What bonds? Who stole bonds? Tommy says they think he did. Oh, that's silly. Tommy wouldn't steal anything. Let me see that letter. He said not to let you read it. This looks as though he had something to do with it. They have him in jail. That's why I had to tell you. A telegram. I signed for it. Thank you. It's about Tommy, isn't it? He must be in serious trouble. This is from his lawyer in Springfield. He says Tommy needs money for his trial. Well, what do you think of our experienced nurse? Fainting as though she was seeing her first operation. What's the matter? You better run along, Margie. Stephen, Margie and I have bad news for my brother. What's the matter with Tommy? Is that what's wrong with Margie? Yes, it looks like the marriage is going to have to be put off again. This is from his lawyer in Springfield. He says Tommy needs money for his trial. Trial? What's he done? I can see why you'd want to be with him. Sorry I can't go with you. Of course, that would be like it. But you can't be spared from the hospital just now. Anyway, there's nothing you can do that I couldn't do myself. I'll try to be back in a week or as soon as I can. Well, let me know how things are turning out. All right, just even. Goodbye. Bye, Linda. I'm John Wallace's attorney. You'd better understand the situation, Miss Morgan. Your brother's case is typical of many who are victims of a clever scheme. He attracted my attention because it seemed a good opportunity to break the racket. I'm sure you'll tell us everything. You must realize your brother's facing a very serious charge. But of course you believe that he didn't steal anything. That's the only reason I'm donating my services as the public defender. But the missing bonds must be found, $100,000 worth. But, but Tommy told you he gave them to this man, Adams. Why can't you arrest Adams? My job is to clear your brother, not to prosecute Adams. And your brother frankly admits he took the bonds without his employer's consent. Well, why won't they believe Tommy when he says he was tricked by these other men into giving them the bond? I do believe your brother, but Adams denies it. And I have no proof. Adams and his outfit are past masters of game. What do you suppose he'll do to Tommy? That depends greatly on whether the stolen bonds are recovered. Tommy. Ah, oh, Tommy. Would you mind leaving us alone for a minute? I'll be responsible for him. I wrote Margie not to tell you what happened. 
I didn't want you mixed up in this. Mr. Wallace thought I could help. Well, there's no way you can help me. I didn't want to take you off your job. It'll just put you and Margie and Long at the hospital. And bringing my sister here is just what I ask you not to Tommy, do. Tommy, that isn't fair. Mr. Wallace is trying to help you. We all want to help you. Even Margie wanted to come along. After we knew you were here, you couldn't expect us to stay home and do nothing about it. I didn't want you to know anything about it at all. I wouldn't have written, Margie, but she's expecting me home this week. How'd Margie take it? How is she? You know how Margie feels about you. She knows there's something wrong about the whole thing. She knows you didn't do it. Did you tell Dr. Russell, too? Yes, I had to, darling. I couldn't just run away from the hospital without telling him where I was going. Yeah, that's right. Well, will it make it any different? I mean... You and him? Oh, don't you worry about that until we get you out of here. That might be a pretty long time, according to Mr. Wallace. Maybe not so long, if you'll tell him the truth about the whole thing. I told him the truth. But they only believe half of it. That's the half where I say I borrowed the bonds. They don't believe me when I say Mr. Adams wanted them for Mr. Blake. He said, just to show them for a moment. Mr. Wallace, who is Mr. Blake? And what is he to do with this man Adams? Blake is head of the racket. Adams is his partner. Their game is to fish for young fellows who have positions of trust. They pick on a boy like your brother, show him prospects of easy money in the stock market or betting on the races. Tell him he's a winner but can't collect until he proves he could pay if he'd lost. The kid's foolish enough to sneak bonds from his employer, intending to return them. They fool him by returning counterfeits. Well, isn't it possible to get the real bonds from those men? Those men don't give up a hundred thousand just because you ask them. Besides, Adams is sick, can't even be questioned. The doctor says he's facing a dangerous operation. And in the meantime, Tommy must stay in jail. <laughs> if he came to trial now, the boy would be convicted. I've got to have more evidence. Won't the police help at all? You bet they'll help. Captain Mike Ryan of the Bunko Squad would like nothing better than to clip the wings of Blake and Adams. How much time have we to get this evidence? Oh, I couldn't get the trial held off more than three weeks. Tommy... I have a plan that might work if the police will listen to it. But if I'm to be of any help, it's better if no one knows that I'm your sister. Now, don't you get mixed up in this trouble. Now, don't worry about me, Tommy. You'll hear from Mr. Wallace. Goodbye, darling. Sometimes we have an assignment calling for our knowledge of, say, electricity, medicine, and we try to detail a man so qualified. But we never use nurses, certainly not women. But in this case, a nurse might be able to learn something which no other person could find out. Why not, Captain? This man Adams is under doctor's care. I can't put my finger on him. They say he's really sick this time, scheduled for an operation at the hospital. What could be better if we can arrange that Miss Morgan be assigned as his nurse? It might work. And if it doesn't work, and anything happened to Miss Morgan... A committee of citizens would be down on my neck for trying such foolish ideas. But if it does work, and you can tie up Adams to this bond racket, they'd like that, wouldn't they? Huh? They'd like it. I'd like nothing better than to clamp down on this racket and clean it up. Then why not arrange to have me signed on as Adams nurse when he enters the hospital? You're not experienced in police work. This fellow Adamson's outfit would stop at nothing if they found out who you were. And then suppose something went wrong with the operation. And was found the police department had planted a detective nurse, a girl... They'd send us to jail instead of Adams. Captain, suppose I took the responsibility. Miss Morgan is obviously a qualified nurse. If I had your support in having her assigned as Adams' nurse, uh, what's the harm? I could take the name of another nurse I used to know, a Miss Callahan. Her name was Linda, too. Linda Callahan. Oh, yeah, maybe. Could you get the credentials of this Linda Callahan? Oh, I'm sure of it. Dr. Russell, who's in charge of the hospital where I was head nurse, will do anything for me. All right. With one provision. I am without authority to make this an official act of the police department. We must keep it an absolute secret. And the only way to keep a secret is to keep it to ourselves. Agreed? Yes. Fine. Now then... These technical terms are all over my head. Was the operation a success or wasn't it? Your condition is satisfactory. Hmm. You're not a very talkative, Doc. I, uh, I can't you tell me more. When do I get out of here? When do you get up on my feet? You'll be kept informed as your condition progresses. You don't like me, do you, Doc? You highfalutin' Docs give me a pain. 
You're a price to operate, takes a bankroll big enough to choke a horse, and then you treat me like I'm poison. Hey, what's the matter with me? So happens that I made my price high, hoping you'd take some other doctor. Yeah, well, you like seeing your name in the paper this evening. Saying the world-famous surgeon, Dr. Richardson, performed a very successful operation on a great guy, Lou Adams. That kind of publicity will help your reputation. Operating on a notorious man has a different effect on a doctor's reputation. You wouldn't understand that. The only difference is you grab the cash quicker from me. Unfortunately, I can't select my patients. But even that kind of money can be useful to some charity. Okay, Doc. So what do I do about nurses? You have the right to pick any nurses you choose, so long as they meet with my approval. Miss Callahan here proved very capable in the operating room. I should expect her to remain. You have to treat and dress your wound four times daily. She has her instructions. I won't see you again until tomorrow. In the meantime, you obey her orders. You keep your posted, Miss Callahan. Yes, Doctor. There's that guy with a nice disposition. Oh, I think we can excuse his disposition. Oh. You feel the same way about me, eh? I didn't mean that. I was excusing the doctor. He must be very tired. His operation on you was one of the finest I've ever seen. How do you feel, Mr. Adams? All right. You shouldn't have any visitors for a few days, Mr. Adams. I'm not visiting. I just wanted to talk to him. But that's just what you shouldn't do. Listen, nurse. He won't worry me any more than that doctor did. Run along for a minute. I won't talk to him. But really, Mr. Now, I've got some rights around here. And if you and I want to get along, you want to listen to me sometime. All right. But only for a moment. Okay. Where's Blake? You driving here? No. He said he didn't want to take any chances on being picked up by the police. You know that. Yeah. I'm just beginning to understand. So he waits till the doctor has me nailed to a bed. I can't drive him if he won't come. And sends you down here to find out just how helpless I am. Well, you go back and tell Blake that if he wants to keep his health, he won't lose any time getting down here. Captain Ryan speaking. Oh, it's you. Are you all right? Ah, uh -huh, good. Was the operation okay? Yes, wonderful. But Captain Ryan, he didn't say anything while he was under the anesthetic. They started giving it to him, and he began counting numbers. One, two, three, four. He kept counting until he went completely under. Oh, he knows that trick, does he? But after a few days, he'll want to leave the hospital and go home. I did all I can do to put you on as his nurse at the hospital. You'll have to make him want you to be his nurse at his home. What about that other idea we talked about? Why can't we do that now? You know, the one you and Mr. Wallace mentioned. I'm afraid of that. If Adam was smart enough to pull that gag about counting, he'd be too clever to fall for that other trick. That'll be dangerous for you. But we must try it. Uh, you are certainly a persistent little devil. All right. I'll plan with him now. You be on your guard and don't show you expect anything to happen. I just heard some grand news. Yeah, what is it? A boyfriend asked you to marry him? <laughs> that would be good news, too, only I told you there is no boyfriend. Yeah, well, somebody's missing a great bet not marrying a girl like you. What's the grand news? They're going to let you get out of here and send you home in a few days. Isn't that grand news? Yeah, I suppose they'll all be glad to be rid of me. That isn't so. You're the nicest patient I've ever had. Have I ever given you any reason to believe that I'll be glad to get rid of you? Oh, I don't mean you. But the more I see of that doctor, the worse I feel. <laughs> Which would you rather have? A doctor who's a good surgeon or one not so good but good-natured? If it hadn't been for Dr. Richardson, he may not have pulled through so well. Yeah, well, I think your nursing has as much to do with it as anything he did. You're the only one around here that's given me any decent treatment. Thank you, Mr. Adams. We nurses need good recommendations from our patients. I'll be looking for another job when you leave here. Why is that? 
Why can't I take you with me? Oh, they're planning to send some other nurse home. Well, I don't want another nurse. This is another one of that doctor's ideas. He's doing it for spite. Well, this time I'm going to tell him what I want. Oh, visitors aren't allowed in Mr. Adams' room. We're not looking for Adams. Well, you're Linda Callahan, aren't you? Yes, I am. We're from headquarters. I have an order to bring you in. Sure, what's the charge against her? Just what difference can that make to you? Okay, maybe you don't know who I am. I'm Lou Adams. Yeah, we know that. We also knew that she was your nurse. That's the one good reason we're going to do all our talking to her at headquarters. Say, listen, kid, somebody's getting funny with you just to make it tough for me. You go with these fellows, and I'll have you cleared before they can put you in jail. But I don't want to cause you any trouble. You see, this is an old charge against me. It comes up like this every now and then to bother me. What kind of an old charge? Well, some rich old lady patient of mine with about 15 servants lost a bracelet once. I didn't take it, but... You can't make her believe that. Come on, sister, cut out the gab. You can tell us all that in court. Say, wait a minute, officer. Uh, get my wallet. Yeah. There, kid, use that to ride back here in style. I'll be waiting for you. And don't worry, I'll get you free. Compress this buzzer so the floor nurse will come in to take care of you. You'll be back before I'm another nurse. Come on, come on. Hello, operator. Uh, get me Martin Ferguson, the lawyer, on the phone. His number is York 0817. Name? Linda Callahan. Age? 24. Nationality? The name is Callahan. And mine is O'Rourke. And I'm sorry to see a nice Colleen like you, accused of stealing. Any valuables on you? I have my pearls, the lipstick, some rouge, powder. <laughs> well, you can keep those. Tell them in. Hi, Mr. Ferguson. Adams phoned me from the hospital about you. Oh, Mr. Adams said you would be here to get me out. I thought that might be Dave. Not with me as your attorney. I got the judge out of bed to approve your bail. You work fast, don't you? All right, boys? No, it's not all right. But it's legal. Someday, Ferguson, you're going to try to get your son on one of these cords of yours, and maybe it won't work. There won't be any cigars like these at the river. Nobody's going to send me up there. Not as long as they print those things. You can run along now, Miss Callahan. Your case won't come up in court for another month. Thank you. Now, you boys think of me while you're enjoying those. Yeah? Your cigar is the only thing about you that has a decent smell. I'll be thinking of you long after these cigars are smoked. I don't care what that doctor wants. You take that junk and get out of here. My own nurse will be back soon. Well... Where's that nurse of mine I phoned you about? She's out of jail, all right, but you're out of your head. What are you monkeying around with her for? Women can bring trouble at a time like this. Listen, Fergie, you do what you're told, and I'll do the telling. I'm smart enough to know when I got a nurse I can trust. You better not start trusting anyone until I can get you and Blake out of the country with those bonds. What are you trying to do, kill the racket? Say, if I'm going to do any traveling, I need fresh drinks every day, and I need a nurse for that. If at least my poor kid can't get another eat. Probably run out on you by now. I wasn't going to care. Oh, I didn't mean directly here. Or I would have asked for that. Yes. Then I wouldn't have kept Mr. Adams waiting oh, so long. What have we got here? Some violets. I thought they might look nice in your room. Do you mind? No, I kind of like the idea. Does he cross because you helped me? Yeah, but that doesn't make any difference. Did it cost much to bail me out of there? thousand dollars. What? Oh, but you'll get that back when I appear in court for trial next month. That's the point. We'll be here for trial. But I must. You'll lose your thousand dollars. Maybe it'll be worth it. Come on, now, fix up these bandages and I'll get some sleep. Tomorrow we go home, kid. We'll like it. Okay, and Linda, you want to get ready to feast your eyes on a cute little bag of tricks. Then your guest tonight will be a woman. No, she won't stay long. She'll just drop in to make sure it's okay for Blake to put in his appearance. Hmm. Kind of like an ambassador to an important personage. No, Vicky acts as Blake's periscope. Oh, I see. To make sure it's safe for him to come to the surface? Yeah, that's right. Oh, say, by the way... Uh, Vicky doesn't trust other women. Mm -hmm. She might not understand about me telling you Blake's coming here. You know, he hasn't a very good reputation with those police friends of yours. 
Yes, friends of yours, too. But you don't have to worry about me. You know, I once heard a man say, the only way to keep a secret is to keep it yourself. And I've never forgotten that. Okay, if I didn't believe that, I wouldn't have told you. I'd better hurry and clear away these dishes and be ready to let her in. Oh, you won't have to let Vicky. She has her own key. Oh? No, not old. Oh, hello, Vicky. I didn't hear you come in. No, you were too busy discussing me. Must be swell to be sick with a nurse like that around. So let Blake see her. He'll come down here and move in with you. What do you mean, come down here? Didn't Blake come with you? Where is he? Blake sent me to tell you he isn't coming here. What kind of a stunt does he think he's pulling on me? He'll come down here and bring my share of the stuff, or I don't know the reason why. But he has a good reason, and I think he's right. Yeah, sure, you think he was right. You're counting on cutting yourself in on a piece of it. Sure, I'm thinking. But that doesn't mean that Blake won't take care of you. Yeah, well, anything you get, you'll get from Blake. 50-50, and you can tell him so. And I'll make the deal to unload him. How are you going to unload $100,000 worth of bonds? You won't be out of that chair for a couple of weeks. not safe with you in this condition. I'm a stranger around. I don't like it. Don't worry about her. I had Ferguson bail her out of trouble. She leaves out of my hand. Yeah. And somebody will be handing it to you through a jail door. Oh, yeah, well, just the same I'm keeping her with me. I can't move without a nurse, and it's no snap to find one you can trust. I wish you'd listen to reason. Blake has a plan. He sent me to tell it to you. Yeah? What is it? Well, Blake thinks the bonds are too hot to handle here. The young fella he took him from has a trial coming up in court. The kid's yelling too much. Blake wants to take the bond out of the country and meet you in Paris. Oh, he does. Well, you tell Blake the operation I had wasn't on my head. I'm moving in on him. And I want an extra room for my nurse. I thought you might like to have some coffee. Well, I wouldn't. I'm going downtown to cut myself a piece of steak. I have an appointment with a lawyer named Ferguson. I'll see you later. Hello, Fergie. How long have you been in town? I've been in town just long enough to catch up with the biggest bloomer you ever pulled. And in your opinion... What might that be? When you started taking orders from Adams instead of Blake, what's the idea of putting up money to bail that nurse out for Adams? Is she on the level? She's harmless. I looked her up. So what are you doing in town? Blake sent me in town to give Adams the bad news. That should have been your job. Adams will never take it from me. Well, he didn't take it from me. Adams blew off steam and made all the threats. Blake will never get those bonds out of the country without Adams trailing along. Blake can't wait for Adams to get out of a sick bed. You should hear Adams' idea. He's going to move in on Blake and take the nurse with him. That nurse is going to learn too much. Pretty soon we'll have to declare her real and you just to keep her mouth shut. Why were you ever crazy enough to bail her out of jail? He won't nurse. He thinks this one's made special for him. Listen, Fergie. If that nurse of Adams is such an important crutch to him that he can't get along without her... Okay, that's easy. Let's throw away the crutch. Yeah? How? What would have lifted the bail? We'd have to first deliver the body. If you take my advice, you'll slam that nurse right back into jail. Goodbye, Fergie. Thanks for listening. Miss Callahan. Hey, Linda. Yes? Come here, will you? Uh, Hurry up. What are you doing up? Why are you dressed? You know you shouldn't yeah, do that. Never mind about that. Help me on with that. Now, listen, kid. I just got wise to something. Things aren't right around here. And you better tell me something and tell it to me straight. Why, yes, I will, but what? Where do you come from? Who are you? Well, you know all that. I, I'm Linda Callahan. Oh, Why? Sure, I know that much. But who knows you've been here with me? Who'd start hunting up for you if you were missing for a long time? Well, I have some people, but they wouldn't try to find me, not since I was arrested. Why, what's worrying you? Oh, it's nothing. Nothing we can't handle. i got to get out of here and get out in a hurry. Oh, before he steps on the boat, and it's something we can't wait. 
But you're in no condition to travel. It's dangerous for you to do this, yes. and I'm not going to let you do no, it. No, never mind about that. I'll be responsible for what happens to me. The point is, I've got to take you with me. And I don't want anyone squawking if you're missing. No one will ask about me except, well, what about my arrest? I have to be here for my trial when it comes up in court. Forget about that. You won't be here when it happens. Let Ferguson worry about that. That's what we pay him for, to do all the worrying for us. Now hurry up and get yourself ready and don't lose any time. bedroom to do up his curls. What's he doing out of his wheelchair? Maybe you better ask him. Don't try to be funny. What kind of a nurse are you to let him do this? I thought he usually does what he wants to. Never mind being smart with me. I'm on to you. Answer my question. As a good lawyer says, would you mind repeating the question? Oh, is that you? Yes, it's me. What are you doing all dressed up? Stick around for a while and you'll find out. Say, what have you done with that chauffeur, Red? The dumb driver you never can find when you want him. He's always around when I want him. He's outside waiting for me now. If you're counting on him driving you to Blake's, you're wasting your time. Oh, that must be Red now. I'll let him in. Don't let her delay you with any more of her gabbing. We've got to get out of here in a hurry before she can think of some scheme to stop us. Suppose the chauffeur won't drive us there. Do you know where to find this man, Blake? No. But Red will drive us all right. He wouldn't dare openly refuse me. Two gentlemen from the police department to see Miss Linda Callahan. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce Miss Linda Callahan. Now, you better be sure you're not making a mistake. This girl's out on bail. We're sure, all right. But the bail's going to be canceled. And this is in order to remove the body. Oh, I begin to see the light. This is some of Smart Ferguson's work. Well, sit down, boys. Make yourselves comfortable. You're going to go back without the body. This is Mr. Adams. Put Mr. Ferguson on in a hurry. Huh? Where'd he go? Oh. Oh, I see. Not since Miss Vicki Roberts was there. No. No, never mind. Now, listen, kids, somebody's getting too wise around here. And that bird Ferguson is can't, can't wait around here for you. You go with these fellows, and I'll arrange for you to follow me. I'm sorry, kid, but that's the best I can do now. Is it all right now if we go ahead with our work, Mr. Adams? Where's your hat and coat? In the hall. Come on, let's get them. Just some nice people leaving after a pleasant weekend. You had enough comedy for one day, and right now is where it stops. Get into my room and close my bag, and don't waste any time. You're driving me up to Blake. He's driving both of us up to Not Blake. Not this trip. I got some work for you to do. Now get going and stop stalling. I'm on to your game. Bring those bags out of the car. You're cross-eyed if you think you can get away with this. And I'll knock you and Fergie cross-eyed for pulling that bail on my nurse. Now, if you don't want Blake to know about the last job of yours, you'd better bring her up to me. Supper to keep a sparrow alive. If you'll take my advice, we'll put some food in your stomach. Oh, I couldn't eat. I'm only waiting to get out of here. You see, it's so important. I can't stay here tonight. Are you sure you phoned that lawyer, Mr. Wallace? Yes, I told you. I phoned his house about an hour ago. They said he wasn't home, but they'd leave word you want them. Are you sure you got the right place? It's Mr. John Wallace. Yes, I know him. Most everyone does. No, oh, it's you, Wallace. I just had a bet with the matron of the woman's ward that nothing would get you down here tonight. A sergeant by the name of a rock should be smarter than to make such bets. Well, how would I to know that you'd come? Because if I'm to get along with a policeman by the name of a rock, I better come running when I get a call from a gal by the name of Callahan. Well, then what are you waiting for? You ought to give me that money you lost on the bet. I'll give it to the matron for you. All right. It's fifty cents. Now see that you pay it to her. Okay, Rock. <laughs> Well, it's about time you arrived. Here's a little bribe to let us alone for a while. 
And what's the meaning of this? Don't get excited, Mrs. O'Rourke. It's that 50 cent bet your husband said I should pay you. And thanks for betting on me. <laughs> I never believed I'd win that bet. <laughs> now you have a try and get some sleep. How'd they put you back in here? Was it Adams? No, it was that lawyer, Ferguson, who bailed me out the first time. He withdrew the bail. You're sure they're not onto you? It wasn't Adams who made Ferguson do this. Oh, no, Adams was furious. But you better hurry and get me out of here. Blake is planning to leave the country. Where is Blake? Did you find out where they have the bombs? No, only that girl, Vicki Roberts, and the fellow who drives her know where Blake is. But they must guess who will. Oh. That move was too smart. Oh, no, they were fighting among themselves. We're wasting valuable time. Adams is getting ready to go to Blake. He's probably gone by now. I don't know how to find Blake unless I go with Adam to that girl. But I couldn't get you out in time to do any good. Then tell Captain Ryan to send some men up there to follow them. I'd better tell Ryan something and in a hurry. I'll get word to you later. All right. All I want you to know is that Adams is as sore as a boil. He's on his way to Blake now. It's all right with me if you refuse to get his nurse out of jail, but what's he going to do without her? I don't care if Adams dies. Be a big load off my mind if he did. How are you going to get to Blake? That's easy. You'll never catch little Vicky without knowing where her meal ticket is. The chauffeur is calling for me. There's the bell now. That's probably my chariot waiting. I'll slam that chauffeur in the nose if he doesn't stop ringing that bell. Are you sure it's not that nurse ringing the bell? Don't make me laugh. With Adams out of town and you refusing to help her, what chance has she? I think you're out of your head if you try it. And as soon as I see Blake, I'll tell him so. And tell this to Blake. Tell him I went over to see young Tommy Morgan in jail today. The boy says he'll take my advice when the case comes up in court. I told the kid we'd take care of him if he changes his testimony. Well, cops, get in here. What do you want? Hello? Hello? Uh, what did you say? Look out! It's a cop! Oh, you big bloody... Hey! into a lady's apartment. What do you want? We want you, baby, or anybody else that's around here. Come on. You've got no authority to take me, and I'm not going with you. Oh, you're not, huh? Well, you'll change your mind about that. Bring your hat and coat. That was my lawyer on the telephone. He'll have my habeas corpus down that jail in two minutes. You wait and see if he doesn't. There's never no rights in this country. You better be careful how you handle me. I know people who make you pay for this. Ah, oh, dry up that mouth of yours. There are other people here who might want to sleep. You're not even decent enough to be in jail. Oh, is that so? I'm not decent enough to be in jail. Well, listen, you female cop. Any more insults from you and I'll have you thrown off the job. And any more cracks like that out of you and I'll have you thrown right off those two feet of yours. If you ever try it, you'll go down with me. I'd like nothing better than a chance to roll in the gutter with you for just a two-minute tussle. Well, come on in here and I'll give you a chance. Ugh. Do you think that's good diplomacy to talk to the matron that way? You might need a favor to help you. Are you trying to teach me jail manners? I've been around long enough to know how to treat that old battle act. She's been very nice to me. Trying to get me out of here, telephoning people for me. If we're nice to her, it might make it easier on both of us. You mind your own business. I can get out of here without any help from them. But why'd they put you in here? Are they blaming you for my trouble? Will you stop asking dumb questions? How could your trouble have anything to do with me? Well, I'm glad of that. Now get out of that lower berth and get up where you belong. I don't want to have to shinny down from the top like a monkey when Ferguson gets here with my habeas corpus. Say, do you suppose you could arrange for Mr. Ferguson to bail me out again like Mr. Adams wanted? Don't be a sap. You've caused enough trouble already. I wish you didn't think I'd ever stolen that bracelet. I've never stolen anything in my life. Well, you cut out the weeping. It doesn't mean a thing to me. If you'd stolen a dozen bracelets, you might have money enough to get out of here. Anyway, we're not going to drag you around like an anchor. Of course, I couldn't expect it. But suppose when Mr. Ferguson comes here, he treats you like he treated me. Don't compare yourself with me, baby. Yes, that is right. Is that a wise crack? Hey, hide down in there. Well, Fergie, you must have driven through every stoplight. What took you so long? Never mind being in such a hurry. You're not going anywhere tonight. 
Listen, smart guy, this is no time for kidding. I'm not kidding. This time you're staying right where you are. And what kind of a bright idea is that? I've got enough explaining to do, letting Adams get the Blake. What's that got to do with me? Getting yourself arrested has put a fresh angle on this. Grabbing you means somebody knows too much. You're cutting your own throat if you think you're going to start telling me what to do. You think you're being so fresh, here's something else you ought to know. Adams is going to open that old sore against us unless I show up with his nurse. Oh, don't try that on me. Even that won't get you out. You're silly enough to run a sightseeing bus right up to Blake's hideout. Letting you run loose is like posting road signs for the cops. Cool your heels. I'll get you out when it's time. Yeah, after they've skipped the country. Well, they're not going to leave without me. Don't forget, I know where Blake is. You wouldn't dare squawk. And don't waste your time bothering me again. When everything's safe, I'll have you out like that. The dirty, low-light, double-crossing crook. Like that, huh? And they'll do this to me, will they? It's all your fault that I'm in here anyway. But you said a little while ago it had nothing to do with me. But I'm sorry, really I am. Oh, you're sorry, are you? Well, you're being sorry isn't going to open that cell door and let me out of here. Now get up there where you belong or I'll throw you up. I hope you have a good night's rest and pleasant dreams. Fooey. And nightmares to you, baby. Out of the way, shrimp. What do you mean, hang up the phone on me that way? Don't give me any argument, Red. Vicky's staying right where she is. In jail. In jail? That's some of your work. Wait till Blake learns about this. He's already burned up that Adams didn't bring her with him. From now on, I'm dealing the cards for Blake. And I've stripped the deck of Queens. I've got orders not to show up without Vicky. Now listen, Red. We're playing a game that can't be won with a woman in the deal. When a man in our business falls for a girl, he might as well walk into the nearest police station and give himself up. And you're showing a little too much interest in Vicky Roberts. Just to be carrying out orders from Blake. If I were you, I wouldn't make a remark like that. Somebody might hear you and think you knew what you were talking about. All right. And don't show so much interest in Vicky. And keep your nose out of my business. It's my business to get Vicky back up to Blake. Unless you tend to your business and get her out of jail, I might decide to make a little trouble for you. Okay. Start your trouble. And I'll dig up those 14 counts I've got against you. Now stop talking like a child. Get back to Blake and tell him to get some practice traveling without women for a while. All right. But I'm warning you, you're making a mistake of your life. But it's your funeral. There goes my trip to Paris, London, Vienna, and the Riviera. Had you planned on going abroad? Well, I guess as long as they've left me in the lurch, there's no harm in telling it. It's really your fault that I'm not packed with them and on my way to Paris. Why, my fault? Adams made me stay here to bail you out. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't you suppose they'll wait for you? Not if old frozen face Ferguson has his way. Oh, I wish I could go to Europe. You came pretty close to having your wish come true. I didn't know that. Then if we hadn't had a bad break, we would have been there together. Yeah. Might have been swell at that. I always wanted to go to Europe see all the grand shops and buy a lot of pretty clothes. I always wanted to drink quarts and quarts of champagne. I was going to take a bath in that French perfume. <laughs> Boy, that would have been great. But that would have cost lots of money. I'd have had lots of money. I was in on a deal where I'd have been knee-deep in orchids. What a chump I was. But you know something? I got one ace up my sleeve. Oh, I hope so, for your sake. Well, I have. You know that fellow Red, Blake Chauffeur? Well, he's in love with me. I'm hoping that he won't let me down. Boy, if he does, I must be slipping. I don't think Blake will go very far without Red telling me. Come on. You can go. I told you they couldn't keep me in here. Well, so long, kid. I hope you don't get more than ten years. Not you. You. I? There must be some mistake. Well, what do you care? Get going before they find out if it is a mistake. We don't make mistakes here. A Dr. Russell put up bail for you. You act like you don't want to get out. Oh, I, uh, I don't like being helped under those conditions. If Dr. Russell gets me out, he'll expect me to marry him. Well, there's no law against it. Say, has he got any money? He owns a small hospital in the country town. I'll tell you what you do. Get him to put up bail for both of us. Then you can come along with me to Paris. If I thought that were really possible, I... Of course it is. I'll fix it. 
Well, make up your mind what's it going to be, Paris or jail. I'll ask him. Don't ask him. Put the works on him. He's waiting for you down in the visitor's room. Thanks. Bye. Goodbye. Wasn't there some way you could let me know? I just happened to read about it in the newspapers. Something about Linda Callahan. I got here as soon as I could. Stephen, you shouldn't have come here. Well, I could say the same thing about you. I was afraid right along you were heading for trouble. Yes, and I was just getting everything straightened out. Well, all I know is you never stole anything in your life. But Linda, you know I want to see you through this thing. Stephen, you don't understand. Arresting me was just a trick so I could help clear Tommy of this bond theft. And just as I was succeeding, you come along and wreck everything. Well, you certainly didn't think I was going to stand by and do nothing. Oh, I appreciate what you're doing, Stephen, but I couldn't tell even you. I promised Captain Ryan and Tommy's lawyer. That was the only way they'd work with me. But, darling, you can help now. Why, of course. I'll do everything I can. But I don't want you taking chances like this. Well, listen carefully, Stephen. There's a girl named Vicki Roberts in here with me. I can't let her out of my sight. There's something I have to do for her so she'll trust me. Now, listen. Excuse me. Captain Ryan? I'm Ryan. Well, your nurse asked me to get word to you that she's at the Adams house with that other girl, Vicki Roberts. She said you'd know what to do. Who arranged to release them? Well, I bailed her out. And then she made me do the same for the other girl. Say, who are you? Well, I'm Dr. Stephen Russell. I run the hospital where Linda trained. And it so happens that this monkey business of yours is delaying my marriage to her. Doctor, you put an awful boner to let those girls out. I expected you to say that. I seem to have been doing the wrong thing all day. Dr. Russell, this is Mr. Wallace, attorney to your nurse's brother. How do you do? Are you responsible for this nurse turning detective? Not exactly. I only agreed after she insisted. Captain Ryan is giving her as much protection as possible. Yes, sir? Rush out to the house where you arrested Vicki Roberts and the other girl. Find out where they go. Keep in touch with me. Well, those gals are in jail. Not anymore, and I don't want them arrested. I want you to see where they go. And if you lose sight of them, don't come back. Yes, sir. Oh, Rick, what took you so long? I could have jumped through a hoop when I heard your voice. Maybe I didn't lay the law down to Ferguson about keeping you locked up. I figured I'd scare him into getting you out. Where till I get a crack at that guy? I'm going to make him wish he died when he was a baby. Are Blake and Adam still up there? Sure. We know too much. They're afraid to go without us. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you'd arrive. Oh, Linda's all right. She had a doctor friend get me out. I thought Ferguson did that. Didn't he do anything? Yeah, he did plenty. He tried to keep me in jail while Blake and Adam skipped the country. Ferguson doesn't even know we're out. Where is that doctor friend of yours now? Oh, she dropped him. She's gone with us. Well, that'll satisfy Adams. He's been yelling his head off for his nurse. Don't you think we'd better get started before Ferguson finds out and tries any more funny business? That gives me an idea. Hello. Is this Mr. Ferguson, the expert barrister? The most esteemed habeas corpus delecti e pluribus unum? You common pickpocket. Well, hang on to something, sweetheart, because you're going to fall flat on your ear. Yes, this is Vicky. You guessed it. Yes, Mr. Smart Alec, and I'm not telephoning from the jail. I'm as free as the birds. <whistles> Mockingbird. And here's something else, Mr. Magna Charter. That little nurse is out, too. Isn't that the funniest thing you ever heard? We just thought you'd like to know. Ha, 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 ha. You won't be free more than an hour. Who got you out? Wouldn't you like to know? That makes him a wild Indian. Let's get out of here before he goes on the warpath. <laughs> Police station. Sergeant O'Rourke speaking. Oh. What do you want, Ferguson? Sure. The nurse Callahan and Vicky Roberts are both out, and it was a pleasure to turn them loose on clean bail, instead of the kind you always use. Well, as much as I dislike giving information to the likes of you, it's a matter of public record. The young fellow that went their bail is Dr. Stephen Russell, owns a hospital in Centerville. And now you'll have to excuse me, Ferguson. While I wash me ears.
Dr. Russell's hospital. No, Dr. Russell isn't here today. He's in Springfield. No, I don't know where in Springfield. Oh, you're a lawyer. Wait a minute. No. Wait a minute. I don't know very much about it. Uh, wait just a moment. Maybe it's something about Tommy. Let me speak to him. Hello. This is Marjorie Bennett speaking. I'm a nurse here. Yes, I know about Dr. Russell's trip to Springfield. Have you seen him? I must find Dr. Russell right away, and that nurse. You know the one I mean? Yes, I do. You mean Linda Morgan, Tommy's sister. Linda. That's the one I mean. What's her last name? Morgan? Oh, yes, she's the one who was the sister of young Tommy Morgan. Oh, yes, I'm his lawyer, too. We've all been so anxious to hear how Tommy is. Oh, yes, that's why Linda went up to help him. Is Linda coming home with Dr. Russell? Yes, yes, I think she will. Oh, yes, we'll take good care of her. Yes, yes, I'll tell her brother, too. No, no, never mind, I don't need the doctor now. Adam's place is as dark as a stack of cats. Not a soul around there. Maybe they cleared out before we got there, huh? Now what are we going to do? Yes? Just a second, Dr. Russell wants to talk to you. Your hospital. Thanks. Hello, Mabel. I'm detained here in Springfield. Those operations scheduled for tomorrow have to be postponed. Very well. Oh, Doctor, just a moment. Margie Bennett wants to tell you about a telephone call that came for you. Hello, Doctor. This is Margie. Your lawyer called from Springfield. He was hunting for you. But after we talked a little while, he said he'd find you later. What are you talking about? I don't know any lawyer here be hunting me. What did you tell that man? Oh, you did. He was very kind about Linda. He said he'd take good care of Tommy, too. I was so glad to talk to him. We had a long talk. Just a minute. I'll stop right there. Listen carefully. Did you tell him Linda's name is Morgan? Oh, he knew that too, eh? Did he know that Tommy is Linda's brother? Oh, he did. How long ago did you talk with him? Oh. No, that's all. Goodbye. Somebody was smart enough to call my hospital and find out who Linda is. I'd put her in a spot. And we're all a lot of nitwits. There's only one cute bird in their outfit to think of that. And that's their lawyer, Ferguson. Operator. I want you to check up on a call put in here in Springfield less than an hour ago. The Centerville Hospital. To Dr. Stephen Russell. Move fast on this one, operator. Wallace, look up that Hague's corpus phone number, home and office. Never mind. I got them here. All of them. You can count me in on this until you find it this time. Yes. Thanks, operator. That's once Ferguson fell down. He put that call in from his own office. Now he'll make a beeline to Warren Adams, and all we've got to do is follow him and coast right into that hideout on his heels. Say, Blakey, it's going to be swell traveling in a big liner like that. That's what I've always wanted, traveling style on a big boat. We're going to need lots of staterooms with you and Adams and... Linda and me, and Red. Not Red. He's not going. Why not? What do we care how much money it costs to take Red along? He's got lots of money. Besides, I'll want a chauffeur. Well, there's plenty of chauffeurs in France. Say, what's the idea of wanting to drag him along? Are you getting any ideas about him? Why, no, certainly not. You're getting silly. I want someone to drive me. We don't want to pick up just anyone. You know you can trust Red. All right. That's because I'm used to trusting him and not because you wheedled me into it. Oh, sure. When do we sail? Just as soon as that nurse gives Adams the okay to make the trip. You know, I was thinking, if we took a notion to sail without Adams and without the nurse, maybe we wouldn't have to deal out so much money. Then there'd be only you and me and something for Red. Huh? Oh, no. Adams and the nurse are going along. Right on the same boat. But they'll have rooms on a different deck. So they should happen to disappear some night in the middle of the ocean? 
we wouldn't even be questioned. Where is she now? As usual, in there with her invalid. You know, it didn't do me any good to be without you for a few days. I'll get square with Ferguson for that. I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't have you to depend on. I wouldn't know which way to turn without you. But I don't like that Ferguson. He's crawling. Ooh. Crawling? That's a good description of Fergie. But when he tried to keep you away from me, he stuck out his chin in the wrong place. I was going to ask you a question, but maybe I shouldn't. You might think I'm sticking out my chin in the wrong place. Well, I wouldn't have to answer you. I just wondered what you'd done to Ferguson to make him dislike you so. Trying to keep you from seeing Blake and then sending him back to jail so you wouldn't have a nurse. Doesn't he want you to get well? Listen, Linda, you're the only one around here that's interested in my health. Ferguson and Blake would hire a nurse who'd murder me if they could. Well, if you believe that, then why'd you decide to trust me? You know, I have that charge against me for stealing a bracelet. You don't know whether I did that or not. Oh, I've been studying you pretty closely. You've been patching up this puncture of mine a good many times. And I've watched how you felt towards me. I know I can trust you. And then you're in this trouble with the police. You need me. Listen, Linda. Here's something I've given a lot of thought to. Does that mean anything to you? No. Has your name, Box X-22, and the name of a New York bank. Correct. Now, here's a little trick of mine. I don't trust Blake, so I want you to keep that card. And if any time you hear I've met with a an accident, you'll know Blake's back of it. Go to that box and get that letter I wrote. It has enough proof against Blake to hang him and tells all about his being a partner in this bond racket. You know, it's uh, little things like that that keep Blake afraid of me. But suppose he knows I have this. That won't place me in a very safe position with him. That's the joke. That's where I'm smart. He'd never figure I'd give it to you. Now to let Blake know I have that letter planted. That'll spoil his sleep. Then you won't tell him I have this? Certainly not. And see that you don't. Very pretty. You ought to hang a bell around your neck if you're going to sneak up on people. Blake, you've heard that old gag about planting a letter in a safety deposit box, haven't you? Are you trying to scare me with that child's trick? Yeah, it is a child's trick. Until it works on you for the first time. And the more you think about it, the more it bothers you. That's the only reason I came out here. Just to bother you. Now, don't worry. Nobody will ever know it's Adams who will be lost at sea. The name on his fake passport, copied off a tombstone. Well, what about her? Same thing. You're not afraid. You're not backing out on this scheme of mine. Uh, no. I was worrying about you. Do you think it was wise to tell him that? Might give him an idea to skip for Europe and leave you stranded. You know, that gives me an idea. He knows I'm helpless to travel alone, so I think I'll let him do my traveling for me and put the ocean between us. With the bonds? Yeah. And I'd like to see his face when he tries to sell them over there. In France, he'll get ten years for just trying to peddle counterfeits. Then you have the real bonds. Now you are sticking out your chin. Oh, I just thought if we were kind of in this together, it might be better if I did know. Listen, Linda, I've never trusted anyone before in my business. Only a fool puts himself at the mercy of a woman. I noticed even with... Women are grateful, as long as they're helpless. So well, that was your purpose in helping me? Yes, at the time. But since then, I've taken you into my confidence. For the same purpose? No. As a matter of fact, I think I've fallen hook, line, and sinker for you. 
I didn't think you had any sentiment. There's a strange car pulling up around the road. That's Ferguson. It's about time. Listen, boss. I'd watch that guy, Ferguson. I don't trust him too much. That's right. He wasn't thinking about you when he tried to keep me in jail. Say, does anybody trust anybody around here? I have to trust Ferguson. Will I get those passports? Let him in. Where's that nurse? In there with Adams. All right. He wanted her. Let him have her. We're in a pretty jam, thanks to Vicky. They're on to us, Blake. That nurse was planted here by the cops. You're crazy. Linda Callahan got me out of jail. That's more than you ever did. Yeah? And that's where she slipped. Her name's not Callahan, it's Morgan. And she's the sister of young Tommy Morgan. Does that get into your thick skull? Have you got those passports? Right here. And one for me. All right. We'll leave her with Adams. This is all we need. I'll take this myself. Is this what you're looking for? So, Ferguson had your right. A copper. I'll take those bonds, Mr. Adams. You haven't got the nerve to use that on me. Don't come any closer. What can I lose? Either you'll get me or I'll get 20 years. I think I'll take a chance. You don't know much about guns, do you? Well, I do. You have to release this safety catch before it'll shoot. Now it's ready for business. Shooting me will only make it worse for you. The police know I'm here with you. They'll know you did it. Even that would be a safer chance for me. Linda, I was a fool to tell you too much. I had plans for us then, and now I don't dare let you tell them. What you've done for your brother proves what you would do for me if I were the right man. I'll always think of you and wish I could have you with me. You're forgetting that you can't get away from here alone. Why, in your condition, you can't even drive a car. That's right. And you're going to drive me to a safe place. She isn't going to drive you anywhere. I see you found out who you're dealing with. Oh, what brought you back? Guess I've been a little careless, running out in such a hurry. You know, it's a good thing Ferguson's watching out for me. He always looks into things very carefully before making a move. Likes to check up on every angle. Doesn't believe in leaving any evidence behind. And always likes to cover his tracks. So we've decided not to leave her here. Come on, King. You take care of your own business. I'll manage affairs here. She's not going anywhere with you. All right. Then I'll leave her here with you. Go away, 
waste time on me, kid. Are you a little chance I gave you? I'll never forget what you did for me. Stephen, try to help him. He did this for me. He's dead. I forgot. Here's something he gave me. It'll help Tommy. Keep it for me, will you? I, I think I'm going to... Too bad you can't be at the station waiting for yourself with one of your habeas corpuses. And these people are clients of mine. That's why I'm here. You haven't got a thing on me. A thing on you? What do you think these are? Station house, James. It's a pleasure. Oh.